It's a lie. Alright. Promises of the two Advents. Revelation chapter 21. Book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ chapter 21. We're going to read verses 1 through 5 and then 9 and 10. Found your spot. Let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, 21, 1 through 5, and then 9 and 10. And the Word of God says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And down to verses 9 and 10. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which has the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues. And talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And our Father, Lord, what a wonderful passage. And it's coming. It's coming. Lord, because we know that you do everything that you say you're going to do. And Father, you've given us a look into the future. Just as our brother John was taken up in the spirit into heaven while he was there on the Isle of Patmos and was shown what was to come. And so we say, Father, hallelujah. God be glorified Lord, for all these things. Bless us this morning through your word, and we pray and ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Turn back one chapter, or two chapters actually, 19, verses 5 through 9. Revelation 19. Taken up at verse 5, and a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right! Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. The greatest wedding celebration that has ever been is coming. Y'all are invited. Back. You're expected to be present because each one of you is a member of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the bride. We're going to make beautiful brides. <laughs> yeah, fellas, sorry. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Get over it, man. <laughs> necessary. We are necessary for that event. 
for 2,000 years now. The bride and the groom, out of a necessity, have been physically separated. Though spiritually, we've stayed very, very close contact. The necessity was twofold. First of all, for the purpose of calling others. Calling others to come and to join that number. And become members of the body of the bride of Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 22, 17 says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. Come. The second is found in Hebrews chapter 11. Over there with me. Hebrews chapter 11, we're looking at verses 39 and 40. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be perfect. We have to wait for the rest. We're waiting for everybody that's going to be a part of that bride. See, because God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and desires the bride to be filled with as many as will come. Those who have gone on ahead have been waiting patiently until the bridal suite is completed, waiting for those of us who remain to be gathered up at the blessed hope. So let's take a look this morning at the itinerary of the events leading up to the way. I mean, what, what bride doesn't get excited about? This is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to be. We're going to start over in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and then 1 Thessalonians 4. In Titus 2 we're looking at verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that we, he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. When folks tell you you're strange, you're odd, there's something wrong with you, you're peculiar, say, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I am a number of those peculiar people. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Verses keep dear to our heart. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep because they've been waiting longer than we have. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with 
with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Lord just reminded me of something, you know, the Moravian folks, I don't know if they still do it or not, they used to bury people upright in the ground. <laughs> but they weren't laying. And when the Lord came, they were already standing up <laughs> when the Lord come to get them. Now this, of course, is the blessed hope, the long-awaited for rapture of the church. This is the first event that occurs in the process leading up the marriage supper of the Lamb. At that point in time, which is in the not too distant future, the Father's long suffering with the rebellion of this world with humanity will have reached its limit. Just as it did in the days of Noah, just as it did in the days of Abraham, and God the Father is going to tell His Son, it's time. Go and get your bride. And get your bride, and the door to the third heaven will open. That frozen sea is going to part, and our blessed Savior, in whom we have all trusted, and whom we have yet never seen, will return to the skies above this earth, covered in clouds, to mask his coming. And will call us down here to come up hither, as it says in Revelation 4 1. An instant before we're changed, the glorified bodies of those who have died in Christ will rise up out of the ground first to be rejoined with their spirit and soul that have been waiting for so long. Moment after that, we will be changed, never having to go through that dark valley of death. We'll be given those glorified bodies. And we will follow immediately after to meet our Lord in the air and return with Him to heaven. For those left here on this earth, this event is the herald of the judgment and wrath of God known as the tribulation. But for us, it's the beginning of a whole new existence and a whole new purpose in our lives for the Lord. Over to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We want to look at verses 9 and 10. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You know, there are not only Islamic imams, but there are fundamentalist preachers out there who will quote verse 9 as a proof text claiming we cannot know anything about our future in heaven. They, they trust the folks' ignorance of the scriptures to not know that the very next verse, verse 10, it states that God has revealed it to them. Revealed it to us by His indwelling Holy Spirit of God. No, we have not yet seen it. No, we have not yet heard it. 
And we will not do so in this mortal life because we don't have the capacity to even begin to imagine it. But we most certainly know about it. The bride of Jesus Christ in its entirety will be escorted by the bridegroom by the arm through the first and second heavens through the parted frozen sea and to the applause of the heavenly host as he leads us into the third heaven. Like I say, that's what Jack Chick tried to pick. Man, it doesn't even come close, man. <laughs> he tried. How can we? How can, how can we even begin to grasp and imagine the glory it's going to be? Can you imagine coming into heaven, being led by the Savior, all of heaven. Well, our first stop is going to be to the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. The thrill and the joy of our fully realized perfection will not even have begun to sunk in. And we're going to find ourselves at the place where we will experience both fear and joy. We will experience humility, shame. We will experience honor and embarrassment. We will experience bitterness and sweetness. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, we want to look at verses 25, 26, and 27. Ephesians 5, beginning at 25. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. That's what's going on here, folks. That's what's going on here. That's the point behind the process. The cleansing of the church. 1 Corinthians, again, this time chapter 3, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 3. Pick it up at verse 10 down to 15. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. We will all appear clothed in white linen robes, as this is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, and we all have it. Unlike when it talks about those during the tribulation period where they have to wash their robes white. 
in the blood of the Lamb. That's not us. But we will each give account of how we serve our Lord Jesus Christ in this life. From the last to the first. That will be the order. From the very last say down to the very first. The faults and the failures will be burned away as we are tried by the fire, the burning examination of the bride by the bridegroom. That's what it was talking about when we read over there about making sure the bride, that no spot or wrinkle is going to cleanse the bride. All that's going to remain when we've come through will be what was done in obedience to the Lord out of a pure heart with the motive of His glory and our love and our devotion to Him. All else is vanity. And it will not stand. And the level of authority, the level of rule under our king, is going to be established at this time as it's given there in Luke chapter 19. We won't go over there. Luke 19, verses 15 to 26. The parable of the pounds, okay? It's talking about Gentiles. It's talking about the bride of Christ, about the rewards they get for how they served. Also, what will be awarded at this time is our crowns that have been earned in this life. There's the crown of righteousness for loving our Lord's return. And everybody ought to be getting that one. <laughs> the crown of life for resisting temptation or for martyrdom. You know, and Lord, help me see something. You know, it's not just you resisted temptation once or you're able to. Every time that crown is more glorious. That crown is, is more high. You know, I mean, some of, some of these folks' crowns are going to be incredible. Some folks' crowns are just going to be a little ring of... <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. About the incorruptible crown for having faithfully run our race. Okay. Not that you won every battle. Not that you How'd you finish? How'd you finish? Crown of glory for those who faithfully have discharged their responsibilities as a pastor. That's one I dearly hope to have. The crown of rejoicing <laughs> for having led souls to Jesus Christ. Same thing. How many of you led to Christ? How many souls are you responsible for? Okay. All those crowns aren't going to be the same. You know, make no mistake, believer. <laughs> it's going to be a time of fear first, then rejoicing. Prepare for it now. Keep that in the forefront of your heart, your mind, now. Do something about it now. Because it's going to come. A lot of folks just don't seem to think that there's going to be any cost. Well, then having been cleansed of every blemish, the bride is ready now to be escorted by the bridegroom to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Go to Psalm 45 with me. That's several verses we're going to look at. Psalm 45, verses 6 to 14. Forgive me if I run a little long this morning, but this is a subject I really like to talk about. <laughs> 
So I'm looking forward to it. Psalm 45, beginning at verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people in thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. For he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. The daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. Go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 8. And nine, there are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number attending at the wedding. Yes, my dove, my undefiled is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bear her. The daughters saw her and blessed her. Yea, the queens and the concubines that praised her. In Matthew 25, 1, Christ says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. They're the guests at the wedding. You know who those virgins are? Revelation talks about the 144,000 Jewish male virgins. Guests at the wedding. There are going to be a lot of guests. A lot of guests at the marriage supper. The Father, of course, is going to be there. The Spirit, who has dwelt inside of us for so long, will be there. The cherubim, the heavenly angels, will all be there. The righteous Old Testament saints will be guests at that wedding. Both Jews and Gentiles from Adam through to John the Baptist. Also, all the tribulation saints as well. For we will not sit down to dine until all of the guests have arrived. Revelation chapter 6. We're going to wait until all the guests arrive. Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. This is talking about the tribulation saints. we got to wait for all them to show up. In fact, you go over to 19, 1 through 10. Revelation 19. After these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his saints at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah! And their smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne and said, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, 
and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for fine